I will tell you about a strange and mysterious group that remains enigmatic to this day. This secret group has captivated the world and was the subject of considerable discussion at one point. This is a group that caused an unusual scare in Karachi, Pakistan, in the late 1980s. Other intelligence agencies refer to this group as the Hammer Group. Let's consider the events of early January 1984. During this time, various newspapers and government documents from Pakistan revealed details about a 22-year-old college student named Mansoor. One evening, as he was returning home from college, he saw a group of five to seven people emerging from the home of a neighbor, Abdul Hamid. All of them were wearing masks and wielding large hammers. Notably, two of the hammers had blood on them, which dripped to the ground as they walked. Seeing the shocking scene made Mansoor extremely frightened. He was puzzled about what was happening and who these people were. Observing their physical stature, they appeared to be quite tall, however, tall individuals are not uncommon in Pakistan, particularly among the Patan tribe and various other communities. Therefore, their height was not unusual. The critical aspect that was alarming was that they were leaving with hammers, and blood was dripping from two of them. This situation was far from normal. After they left, Mansoor entered that house, only to find that Mr. Hamid's wife and only daughter lay dead on the floor. Upon witnessing this grim scene, Mansoor hurried home to inform his parents and then went on to notify others. The police arrived, and during the post-mortem examination, it was revealed that each victim had been killed by repeated blows to the head with a hammer. Initially, the police did not believe Mansoor's account and began to view him with suspicion. At one point, it is said that he was taken into police custody. However, within just a few days while he was in custody, another similar incident occurred in Karachi. In this case, a married couple was also brutally murdered with repeated hammer blows to the head. The doorman of that flat stated he saw a group of masked individuals carrying hammers leaving the premises, but he could not identify when they had entered. Panic spread throughout Karachi as similar incidents continued to unfold one after another. After January, there were no more than one incident a month, indicating that it wasn't a regular occurrence every few days as it had been. As time passed, people began to forget the fear, but then it would resurface unexpectedly. In 1984, over 10 such incidents were documented. Even though there were more than 10 reports, the exact number might have been higher, but it was not known for certain, possibly due to government concealment. This environment led to widespread speculation among people. The troubling aspect was that the fear took hold of the populace to such an extent that they began taking various extra security measures. At that time, the installation of various types of CCTV in homes or similar matters was not prevalent among people. The widespread use of CCTV did not really begin until around 1984, which is why people started to set up guards. If there was one guard at home, they would employ a second one because if there was only one guard, that person was often reluctant to provide security, feeling unable to resist an attack if it were aimed at them. However, everyone agrees that even though many had seen this hammer-wielding group leave their homes, no one had any information about when they entered. So where did they come from? It seems that they cannot be seen entering a house, but only spotted when they come out. After a while, there was a strange development, no one had seen the faces of these individuals, they all wore peculiar masks. In May 1986, one evening while returning home through a desolate park, a 12-year-old schoolboy named Adnan noticed about 18 to 19 people sitting quietly inside the park. It appeared they were sitting in a circular formation, heads down, murmuring something under their breath. Each of them had a mask on their face and a hammer beside them. However, Adnan quietly left the area without making any noise. Upon returning home, he informed his parents, who immediately went to the police station to report the incident. The police promptly went to the park but could not find anyone there. Nevertheless, they did examine the spot where Adnan had mentioned seeing the group and found that the grass there had been flattened, indicating that heavy objects had been placed on it. Normally, when people sit on grass and then leave, it gradually straightens back up. However, their weight was so heavy that the grass bore the marks indicating that something very heavy had been placed there. 
Experts noted that whatever was kept there, whether it was a person or a hammer, each would have a weight of at least 10 mon, approximately 400 kilograms. Although it's not possible to actually find a person weighing 10 mon, none of the members of this masked hammer group, seen by people, appeared to weigh more than 3 mon. So why was their weight so high? Another issue is that whenever they came to a house, they would commit murder, but there isn't much information on significant robberies, only some minor thefts. However, many believe that after these incidents, when people nearby who hadn't realized what had happened discovered the dead bodies, thieves would enter those homes if they found any information. Once inside, these thieves would take some items, leading to the impression that a robbery had taken place and that the robbers had stolen items and left. The problem is that none of the individuals seen leaving with hammers were found carrying any extra bags that could contain burglary tools or stolen items from those homes. Therefore, even though there are some reports of minor thefts, it can be reasonably confirmed that it's unclear whether they came for robbery. After that incident in the park, no further signs of this hammer group were found elsewhere, nor had any incidents related to this group occurred in Karachi. The last reported sighting of them was in May 1986. Afterward, they were never seen again by India's intelligence agency or intelligence wing. There were many rumors suggesting that they could have been conducting espionage activities in Pakistan, and some speculated that these rumors could also have originated from Pakistan. The Pakistani Intelligence Agency ISI, analyzes various intelligence matters and might disseminate certain rumors. However, the central question remains, what was really going on? Who are these hammer groups that have been analyzed in various ways by different people? Commentary from several Pakistani columnists has blamed India's intelligence agency for the incident. Indian intelligence agencies have consistently denied any involvement, but innocent people certainly wouldn't have been targeted by intelligence operatives with hammers. These victims had no political connections and were not wealthy. So, who killed these individuals and why were they murdered? No one has seen this hammer group enter, although some claim to have seen them leave. What were they doing in that park in May 1986, and why were their bodies so heavy? All these questions have turned into a legend that remains ambiguous in Karachi, Pakistan. Specific details have yet to be uncovered. Was it really just a rumor, or did this hammer group come from another world to complete a specific mission before leaving? If that weren't the case, why have neither the police nor the intelligence agencies been able to capture anyone from this hammer group, especially when the victims were merely ordinary people? The core mystery behind the murders remains unknown to this day, which is why the hammer group in Karachi continues to be an unresolved enigma, circulating as a topic of conversation among the people.